Okay, are we going inside of the shirt with these bad boys? Kind of. um, so we'll go through that. I'm going to introduce you without you in the screen okay. as like the starting thing. Then I'll introduce you in person. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Jay McInnes from the Sharp Real Estate Group out of the Oakland offices in downtown Vancouver. As you can see, today is episode 211 of the Sharp Stories. I've got a vacant chair to my side, which is today's first surprise, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. As you can see, young Benjamin is not with us today. Like myself last week, he held the reins perfectly. We're gonna jump into this big surprise. We're gonna jump into the market numbers for June and the details of our current buyers market. We're back to my left. First and foremost is the man, the myth, the legend, Chase Nelson Murray, the newest member to the Sharp Real Estate Group. Sir, I welcome you and welcome to episode 211. Cool, thank you. Hey guys, how you doing? Chase Nelson Murray, Sharp Real Estate Group, newest addition to the team. Uh, been licensed for four years, working in Vancouver, uh, Burnaby, Tri-Cities area, what have you. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, special guest for today's episode and gonna take you guys through what is happening in today's changing real estate environment. Perfect, there we go. Let's get into it. Um, so today we're gonna go through the June minutes. We're gonna try a little rotation here to keep it interesting. Um, I'm gonna go first. So uh, you know the numbers are always interesting. They're a little bit behind as we're talking June. We don't have the July numbers till the end of August, blah, blah, blah. But it's always interesting to see the perspective of the analytical side of the business which is usually dominated by emotions, as we all know. So I'm gonna jump into sold homes first. So for June 2022, 2,444 homes sold. Year over year, a figure we all know I hate to discuss, is down 35%, and that's down 16% than the May sales numbers, which were 2,918 units sold. So this is Metro Vancouver, June sold. All that matters is we are down 16% in actual sold inventory from last month. Listings. June 2022 listed homes, 5,256. That's down 10.1% year over year and 17.6% lower than May listings previous month, which is 5,849. Now for the entire of Metro Vancouver, 10,425 homes listed on MLS, and that is down month over month 3.8%, but up 4.1% year over year. Maybe interest rates a little bit at play here. What do you think, Jay? Heavily at play, uh, I believe, of course. As you can uh, see, we're down almost 20% on both metrics, both listings and sales. Um, a quote we've got here from the Greater, the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board, downward pressure on home prices as we enter the summer in Metro Vancouver due to declining home buyer activity, not, not increased, increased supply. supply. So we've basically got uh, usually inventory up, people have more time and likewise, uh, but now we've got inventory down, sales down, there's buyers on the sideline watching. Uh, we are seeing a bit of pressure due to rates when people have those pre-approvals locked in at cheaper money than they can get today, so they wanna spend it. There's obviously still transactions taking place, but for the most part, uh, I think we're definitely seeing people just waiting and watching. If they have to make a move, great. Things are cheaper. Uh, and we've got a bit more flexibility now, as we'll touch on in a second, but uh, definitely a hesitation on both sides. Sellers figuring they're not gonna be able to get their prices, so they're waiting, uh, and buyers thinking they have more time, which in a lot of segments of the market they do. Um, you wanna to touch on the ratios quickly here. Ratios, guys. So, generally speaking, um, Below 12% buyer's market, above 20% is a seller's market. So a bit of a divide here. Detached homes at 14.3%, getting close to that buyer's market, guys. Um, a little bit more of price drop and time to negotiate on properties that are detached homes. Looking at townhomes at 31.5% and apartments at 30.2%. Still pretty strong seller's market in townhomes and 
apartments. Again, we're waiting for the full effects of the rate increases to really hit the market because people are still transacting on rate holds that have not expired yet. Uh, so the full impact has not quite hit as well as these are the more affordable property types, uh, generally speaking with townhomes and apartments being a lower purchase price than the detached homes. So overall, they haven't been hit as hard, um, but it is looking like a 14.3% for detached. Jay, what do you think about that? I think you touched it right there with the pricing. I think as, those detached are obviously out of most people's realm, um, but to, to argue that point, they're obviously, uh, I think we can safely assume for the most part, uh, people that are in more flexible financial positions that may not be as hit uh, by this whole rate increase circumstance that we've going on now. The 30% plus in the townhouses and apartments still strongly in the seller's market. We were getting 60% plus in the peak of the seller's market before the rate decrease or increases came and things started to decrease down. So we're still a heavy seller's market, but we are of course coming down slowly but surely as we've seen. So those are the market stats. Those are the market numbers. Uh, we'll get into a bit more now. As we are still, yes, technically in a seller's market, when we look at the uh, numbers behind the market we're looking at, as you get out there and get into the market, it doesn't feel as vivid as you would think just looking at the numbers. Um, if you're working with buyers at the moment, you can tell us a story uh, in a second about a client you've recently been working with, but um, you're definitely seeing well, I'll let you go. What, what benefits have you seen with working with buyers recently in the current market, which definitely contrasts what these numbers are telling us? Yeah, well, it's very interesting as far as working with clients in the earlier part of the year compared to now because of just the sheer competition that was in the market. Uh, recently, working with a client, purchasing a townhouse, and there was plenty of time to negotiate, plenty of time to try and secure the property, below uh, asking price with full subjects and then giving us enough time to, to, for our due diligence to look into reading the minutes and the bylaws and ensuring that this is a property that we actually want to purchase instead of rushing. There was actually no other competing offers, um, which is rare for this year, not maybe so much as of now, but it gives you a lot more time to really do your due diligence and ensure that you are willing to purchase and invest in this property, whereas previously in this year, you didn't have the time to do so. Exactly, so I think that's a pretty general uh, experience right now, mm -hmm. working with buyers. Um, again, dating back to this, this, this quote, um, entering the summer of Metro Vancouver due to declining home buyer activity, not increased supply. So we're seeing people waiting and watching, and when you do go in, um, you have the time, you have the flexibility to negotiate, you have the flexibility to, um, put full subjects in there. Uh, I got a 10 day, 11 day subject period the other day, which mm -hmm. was unheard of six months ago. Um, so you, you, in contrast to the numbers, once you get out there, you're really seeing, and again, townhouse market, the one I'm talking about is a condo, um, not in that detached market. And the townhouse and condo markets are the ones that are showing statistically that they are, are strong sellers markets. But when you get out there, it's a lot different story. So that's why we like to always say, follow up with your realtor, don't just look at the numbers to get your idea because the numbers can paint a different picture than what's actually going down on the ground and you've got a lot more flexibility than these numbers will tell you. Uh, last but not least, my highlights when we go to, so the people that I was working with were uh, not first time buyers but buying a, a place in Vancouver for the first time in a while. Um, and they were looking at an older building so they could get a bit more space. As we know, the older builds will enable you a bit more than the newer stuff now. And we were looking into the four key aspects of Strata that we always wanna keep an eye out for that are kind of the biggest price tags if they go wrong. And as you're dating buildings back, the older the buildings, uh, these as systems in the building 
have life expectancies. These are kind of the big trigger points that we want to look out for when reading the minutes, which luckily now we have a bit more time to do so. Uh, a nice thing about this too is if you've got stuff in the minutes, you can call call the property manager, call the agent, have a talk, have them have a talk with the seller. What does this mean? What's going on here? What happened in these? So there's just more time right now. So the four key things that we need to keep an eye out for in these older buildings, uh, if you're wanting a bit more space uh, for a bit more bang for your buck, are what? Give me the first one, Chase. System-wise, what are the four big flags in the building that can cost the most when- uh, Plumbing. When, Plumbing, of course. That's a big one. That's a big one. So plumbing obviously is a very invasive uh, repair job, as we know. Um, and we always want to keep an eye out where is the building system. If the building has a depreciation report, it's going to give us a highlight. This is the typical age of the building. But as you get into the minutes, uh, if the depreciation report's a little bit older, uh, we'll see. Are the pinhole leaks taking place? Is the system starting to fail? Are they starting to use new technology to try and prolong? And how is the strata acting towards that conversation? Are they spot repairing? Is there a plan to repair as needed? Are they deferring? Things like that that you can get out of the minutes that if you didn't have the time to read it, you might not realize that you may be moving into a strata that doesn't really want to maintain in a timely manner, which could cost you a lot of money in the long run. And that's the big thing. How is the, you have the time to really research how the building is looking into and approaching these potential issues and costs. Number two, Jay McInnes. Number two, uh, my uh, personal favorite is, is the membrane. So typically, big one. Uh, if you see when they're building a tower, they cut a big hole and then there's parkade beneath and they will tower above and the rest of the lot that is not covered by tower, that's typically greenery or walkways or whatever, that has parkade below, uh, obviously there's dirt on top of your concrete ceiling of your parkade. There's a waterproof membrane between the dirt and the concrete and that will fail. Uh, when that fails, water goes through the membrane that has failed into the concrete. It will reach the rebar, which is steel. And when steel and water mesh, they rust and it pops the concrete, literally will pop pieces of the concrete off of the concrete ceiling. So this is a huge repair job. You have to clear all of the earth off the lot, get it off site completely as it's contaminated uh, and re-waterproof the entire membrane. So this is a massive job. Um, the waterproofing itself, not so much, but to move all of the earth off and dispose of it, move all the new earth back on, and then landscape it is a massive cost. So this is a big one that we always wanna look out for in the minutes now that we have more time. Number three. Number three, I mean the roof would probably be a good way to go if you're looking at a building that's not concrete. The roof is definitely one that has a life expectancy, typically between 2025, give or take, uh, on the work that was done. Those lovely penthouse owners are gonna usually experience that failure first, but that's a big one, again, with regards to, depending if it's a tower and the roof is small, or if it's a, a wider spanning development and the roof is large. Um, rain screen, did we go into rain screen? Number four is rain screen. Yeah. Uh, probably, definitely the most expensive fix. Um, again, not all buildings need it. Some buildings will have walls fail at different times. We've got past videos and we can do future videos on specifically what to look out for and what this means. But basically, um, it's the exterior walls of the building, typically including the windows that need to be replaced because they're rotting from the inside out. And again, some buildings will go in and rain screen all four walls. Uh, or they will do one at a time, depending if walls fail at different times. So very case by case, and again, nuances to each and every building on what they're fixing and why, and are they actually being proactive or are they not and all this. And we can all go through all of this detail now because we have the time, because it's a much softer market that we're entering. So as a buyer, you now have the, uh, the golden baton, which sellers have had for the past handfuls of months. I think that's about it. What do you have to add? You yeah, I'd say that's about it. Add. I'd just say further to rain screen would be, ideally you would be screening either as your agent or whoever you're working with is looking through the listings. You'd be screening what type of rain, rain screening, if any, or concrete the building has before you even go and view the unit. And then as you're going, you're looking in person on the site, what kind of rain screening has, 
Um, and again, it just adds to avoiding future problems as well as then interpreting the minutes to add value on top of that, really. That's definitely another one. What, what, what's happening? Get as much pre-information as we can first. So obviously no one's wasting time as we go in there. And um, yeah, just really pre-qualifying before we go in and pre-qualifying once we've got all the, uh, all the documents in hand. I think we're gonna leave it there. Cool. Thank you for joining episode 211, sir. It's a pleasure oh, to have you on deck. Salute the outro like you saluted the intro. That's it. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in future videos naturally, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>